All right, just making sure that the focus works on this because I recorded an entire video before this for it to all be out of focus. So I hope this goes better. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Kaufman. Welcome back for another video. In today's video, I wanna talk with you about moving your loved one out of assisted living. Not usually the topic that I'm talking about as my channel typically prepares you for assisted living. Some people, during COVID-19 especially, have decided to move their loved ones home. I don't blame them. It's hard when you're competing for time to go visit, when you have to schedule every visit, or you can't even see your loved one. They might not be getting the socialization they had before, as a lot of buildings are still doing quarantine. And you may feel like they're at higher risk of getting COVID-19 in a communal living environment. And I understand all of that. But many of the families that have moved people out have called me within a month to three months and said, wow, we didn't realize how hard this is. What do we do to come back in? If you're thinking or considering of moving your loved one out of the senior housing, the assisted living or the memory care, or even the skilled nursing and back home, I just want you to consider a few basic things. I have four areas I want to go over for you to consider before making that decision. So you're thinking about taking your loved one out of the assisted living and home. Let's talk about four different areas. The first thing that I want you to consider is yourself. If you're going to bring your loved one home, who's going to be the primary caregiver? Whoever it is needs to be interviewed, even if that person is you. Interview yourself. Are you right for the job? Do you have the patience? Everything's going to take more time. When I wake up at night to use the restroom, I lay in bed for five minutes trying to go back to sleep before I realize I'm never going to go back to sleep before I use the restroom. So then I go use the restroom. I get out of bed. I walk to the restroom. I use the restroom. I go back to bed. Sometimes I wash my hands. <laughs> but my point is it's not lengthy. It doesn't take a lot of time. With, your, with somebody who needs assistance, especially as people get older in age, going to the bathroom can take up to 30 minutes. Someone might have to sit up in bed and just get their balance and equilibrium before they can even stand up so that they don't get lightheaded. Then when they walk to the bathroom, it takes a little longer. When they're in the restroom, they could be in there for 10 minutes or longer. Some people, it takes a while. That's normal for a lot of people as they start needing more care. So by the time they're waking up to getting back to sleep can be a 30 minute interruption in their life, which means if you're the caregiver, that's a 30 minute interruption in your life, in your sleep. So you have to think about that and make sure that's covered. That's just one example, but you need to think about, are you patient enough to take this on? Are you strong enough to take this on? And do you have the time to take this on? And if not, who's going to, and do they have the qualifications to help? Number two is knowledge. Do you have the knowledge of how to do the care to take care of this person? When I first started in senior housing 17 years ago, I acted as a caregiver. I worked for this great company that said, you have to do every aspect of a building before we'll let you run the building. So I had to be a caregiver. And when I would go into rooms and I, I really wanted to be hands-on, I really wanted to learn how to do this. And I remember I went into this woman's room and she needed Ted hose put on. For those of you who don't know what they are, they're like really thick, really tight socks that go up to about the knees and they help with circulation. And man, are they a struggle to get on. And I got down on my knees with this lady and I got the Ted hose. I'd watched other caregivers do it. And I got them on her. And when I got done, I said, how did I do? And she said, you did great. You're learning, but I feel like I just got through a wrestling match. So make sure you can handle this because there's the psychological side and it can get you psychologically. This is very hard work, but the physical side is no doubt. If you have to provide physical care, it adds up really quickly when you're caring for someone 24 hours a day. Number three is make sure you know your exit strategy. This one's pretty simple. If you've already been in assisted living, just know what your plan is if it isn't going to work at home. Number four is 
acceptance, and stick with your plan. If you can't do it, stick with your plan. Go to your exit strategy and help your loved one get in the best hands possible to get the best care. Accept whether you can or can't do it. Maybe you need to ramp up your care a little bit at home. Maybe there's some tools that could really help you like baby monitors or motion detectors, things like this that might help you with somebody. If you're not fully prepared, then don't move out. You're not a failure if you can't do it. This is really hard. It takes a village to take care of somebody as their needs increase. Take into account that from the time you move out, the care is going to typically get harder. It doesn't get easier. So at that point, you're taking on the care at its easiest point from the time that you will take it over. It's going to get more difficult as time goes along, as somebody goes through their changes of conditions. So be prepared for that. So be able to have acceptance without feeling guilty and also stick with your plan. Interview the caregiver, even if that's yourself. Learn how to care give. Educate yourself. Have an exit strategy. And then accept and stick with your plan. This is a very simple four-step approach to considering whether you should move your loved one out of the assisted living you're in and home during a time like this pandemic. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it, all the support, likes, and shares, and all the wonderful stuff you guys do. I hope it's bringing value. I hope it's bringing value to, to you at home. So before the end of this video, uh, once again, hit that like button. It really helps me. It tells YouTube you like it, so then they share it with others. Thanks again, everyone. I'm Jeff Kaufman, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.